back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about the Hey guys, so I'm here today to do a stat update for you. Throughout the year of 2017, I was tracking all of my reading statistics using Brock's spreadsheet from Let's Read. I'll put a link to his channel and where he talks about the spreadsheet down below if you're interested. And I had a lot of fun with this. I will admit, I managed to go up to about July or August time and then I stopped filling it in and I totally forgot about it and then I realised at the end of the year that I had stopped filling it in and I had to fill in about 50 books onto the spreadsheet in one or two evenings which took hours and hours and hours because it's very detailed. So <laughs> maybe if you're going to use a tracking spreadsheet try and actually remember to put stuff into it. That is the lesson I learned. So 2018 I'm going to simplify things and use a different spreadsheet that is less complicated but because it is such a complicated spreadsheet, there were a lot of statistics and I have many things to tell you guys about my reading year in 2017, which I think was pretty successful. It was my second most successful year of reading since I joined YouTube and that's really, really great for me. I actually managed to read a total of 83,016 pages, which is only just slightly under my last year of page count because last year I read 84,000 but I'm really happy with 83,000 because last year I read way more graphic novels and this year it was predominantly novels with very few graphic novels thrown in there actually. So to have read almost the same page count in spite of the fact that I've read way less graphic novels, I'm pretty happy with that. I managed to read 227 books, which is less than last year, but that's totally fine with me because again, they're much longer, much chunkier books. And the longest book I read in the year was Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, which is 1,243 pages, quite a chunky read. The average length of the books I was reading seems to be around 370-ish pages. The most popular book I read in the year was Harry Potter, the illustrated edition of Prisoner of Azkaban, which surprises me not at all. And the least popular was a collection of Tang Fei's SF, which is a translated collection that I picked up at Worldcon, written and paid for by the author. She got all the stories translated and formatted it herself. And the reason it's least popular is because no one else on Goodreads has read it but me. Um, I really enjoyed it, I really liked all the stories, but because it's translated I guess not many people have read it so I have done a review I'll link it below if you're interested. My average rating for 2017 was 3.5 exactly which I'm pretty happy with to be honest because 3.5 is not a bad rating overall. It means that I definitely enjoyed more than I didn't but I think that because of some various factors in the year I had quite a few books I knew I wasn't going to like, um, things that were for awards that I wouldn't normally have read, stuff like that so 3.5 is pretty fair rating overall. Let's break it down a little bit more and see what I read over the course of the year. First thing is genre. For me, fantasy always wins. And in this year, fantasy has won again. However, science fiction has not done badly. So science fiction, I read about 18%. Fantasy, if you combine classic fantasy, steampunk, epic fantasy, urban fantasy, and fantasy, and sword and sorcery actually, and high fantasy and fantasy of manners, I would say we're up into at least 50% of my reading being just fantasy. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to the format and the way that I consume my books, predominantly I read in either audio or in ARC or in paperback. I don't really read that many hardbacks because I find them a bit annoying to hold and I read some graphic novels here and there but not as many as I did last year. I read quite a few ebooks this year because I was reading most of the SPFBO titles on ebook or on my Kindle and I did read one or two mangas and single issues here and there but again not very many throughout the year. If we take a look at the length of the books I was reading, predominantly I read novels, so 75% of what I read was a novel. This year only 10% of what I read was graphic novels, so I'm quite happy with that. About 5% was either a novella or a novelette, and about another 5% was short story collections. So I'd like to maybe bump up the short story collections next year because I got a few sitting on my shelf, but I really enjoyed the shorter things that I did read, I just didn't read anywhere near as much as I was planning to. I'd like to maybe bump that up in 2018. Physical versus digital. Digital for me is either ebooks or audiobooks, and physical is just the books I have on my shelf in physical form. 
this was fairly even actually. Um, I read 53% physical, so just slightly more physical books than ebooks and audiobooks. Moving on to the page count, most of my books, as I said, were in the range between three to 500 pages, which is not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. But I did get a couple of 1,000 or more page books and a couple of five to 800 page books and quite a lot of less than 300 page books because those are predominantly graphic or things like that. My years published chart is always rubbish when it comes to older work. I nearly always read from the 2000s onwards and that is predominantly because I like to pick up new releases and I like to get sent things from publishers and authors and they've nearly always come out in the last year or two. So I don't tend to read much backlist stuff but that's not to say I don't enjoy it, I just find it harder to pick those up over new releases. I do want to improve on this in the next year. Next up I have a quite interesting graph and this is the publishers that I most often read. So if you take a look at this, about 20% of my reading this year was completely self-published authors. Authors who had sent me their book or who had entered into the self-published fantasy blog off. Really interesting to see that statistic being so high for me this year, I'm really happy about that. After self-published works, I then have Macmillan, Orbit, Harper, Tor, Galance and Image kind of taking up the rest of the chart with lots of other publishers sort of scattered in there, but those are definitely the major ones that I most often read from. In terms of book status, most of my reading is new books, which is something I would like to change. Over 57% is new books. 28% was ARCs, so books that are also new. <laughs> so basically most of my books are new. The locations of where I buy my books is quite an interesting one. Um, Audible has managed to take up almost 25% of my purchasing with just under 50 titles being bought from there. That's not bad. Um, Amazon Prime, I do use Amazon an awful lot because it's just very convenient. Um, Waterstones, I bought quite a few from. I bought some from Queen's Park Books. A couple from authors themselves, so they sent them to me or I bought them from the author directly. Um, a couple from friends as gifts and presents for the year quite a lot from publishers and some from subscription boxes and other smaller independent bookshops. Reviewed, um, I've pretty much reviewed everything now, I've got a couple more to do so I think about 5% I've read in the year I haven't reviewed yet because they are sort of mostly ones I read in December so they will be coming up very very soon. My division of star ratings is quite interesting, um, I gave 19 books 5 stars, 36 4.5, 64, 29 a rating of 3.5, 43 a rating of 3, 7 a rating of 2.5, 11 a rating of 2, 1 a 1.5 star rating, 1 a 1 star rating, and I gave 14 a 0 stars, which basically means I DNF'd these books. So I DNF'd 14. In terms of books read per month and pages read per month, I read the most books in February, but in terms of page count, I actually read the most in October. October I read over 9,700 pages, which is crazy, and February I read 36 books, so I'm not unhappy with that at all. I think that was a fairly good year overall. In May, for some reason, I had a bit of a dip, and also in December. December makes total sense because December is the busiest month of the year for me with like Christmas and family and all those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, the rest of the year was fairly steady overall, I'd say. Not sure what happened in May. Author gender, the division of gender for my authors that I was reading. This is interesting because I really wanted to boost up my female and male um, and get it fairly even and I think I've done that. I've got 53% female, 43% male and then the rest are either both, so two authors, trans or non-binary. So really interesting to see that statistic there. Moving on to the protagonist gender, so all of the protagonists from the books I was reading I was tracking and that was quite an interesting thing to do. About a third of what I read was an ensemble cast, so it had female and male and various in between. I had about 28% being just a male lead character and about 35 being a female lead character and then I had just under 1% being non-binary or trans or intersex characters which again was quite interesting to see and it was the first year that I kind of tracked those statistics so that was really cool. The age group that the books I was reading are aimed at, mostly I read adult fiction, so 80% or more was adult fiction. I then had 11% being a YA and the rest was under 5%, so it wasn't a huge part of my reading, but some were universal and some were kids. Countries, this is terrible. <laughs> United States, I read over 63% from the United States, that's really bad. When you then add my 26% from the UK, everything else is other places and I would really like to read more from other places but it is harder 
in science fiction and fantasy to get translations across. So I'm really hoping that that will bump up in the coming years. And I really do want to try and read other authors from other places. I'm going to try my best to do that a bit more in the coming year. But I know that predominantly I will stick with English works, which is going to be from the UK and the US predominantly. Series versus standalone. I tend to read series, but actually this year I read a lot more standalones than I usually do. So 40% standalone, 60% series. Not unhappy with that at all. Um, I would like to finish some more series. I've done a full video telling you the series I completed in 2017. If you want to see that, I'll link it below. So that is it for 2017 statistics. Those are all of the things I was tracking. I'd love to hear in the comments how well you guys did and what you think you will do for 2018. Do you have any way of tracking your statistics? Are you planning to track them? I'm going to be using Sophie's 2018 spreadsheet, which I will link down below. Her channel is a portal in the pages and she's done a really, really great spreadsheet for tracking things. So I'll put it below and she's also done a tutorial video on how to use it and how to edit it and change it for whatever you want to do. So I'm definitely excited about using it. I will certainly be trying to actually keep it up to date and on there you can track other things like what you've bought and where you bought it from and how much money you're spending. So I'm going to do that as well for 2018, which is going to be a little bit embarrassing if I spend too much money. So we'll see. Thank you all for watching. Leave me your comments below and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you for watching a video today. Go pick up a book. Then come back and chat with me again.